You've often referred to the idea of putting others first. What's the best way we can do that? One safe way to start, but again, it turns into a deep subject and we have to explore it carefully and avoid certain misconceptions, is this great idea that Gandhi had of service. And it's been shown uh, scientifically that unless we have a way of serving others, we feel useless. We have to serve somehow. And he called his second ashram in India Sevagram, which literally means service village, village of service. The whole point of it was to be a service center for the country. Often for Gandhi, it meant taking up the lowest work available because people who had been relegated to doing what was regarded as unsanitary work had been stigmatized over the centuries. And he felt that he could best serve their needs by picking up the pail and going and cleaning the toilets side by side with them. Here he was, in the eyes of many, the greatest and most revered person in the entire nation, the rescuer of India's ancient civilization. And you would see him with his little broom and pail going out to clean the latrines. He was serving the most prejudiced against and disadvantaged people in the community. So this doesn't mean that we have to do that kind of work necessarily, but it does show us something to keep in mind that sometimes the lowest work can lead to the highest goal. To go to that higher perspective, Gandhi was also a great leader, and he practiced something that we often call today servant leadership. That is, he never said, I'm going to make the people follow me to get what I want. He said, what do the people want? I'm a facilitator. How can I help them to get it? We've spoken elsewhere about Gandhi's leadership, but you know, often we're told that we can, quote, serve our country, unquote, by military service. And for a nonviolent person, yeah, you're serving your country, but first of all, what in your country are you serving? Are you serving its ability to dominate others? In the long run, you're not leading to their benefit by doing that. And what in you are you serving your country with? With your capacity to be violent? That means you're not developing yourself. On the contrary, you're putting yourself back in evolution. So a person who is a conscientious objector, I'm just using this as an example, is serving a country in a much higher and much deeper sense than somebody who goes along with what the collective of the country seems to want of him or her at that moment. So I emphasize this because serving others does not just mean self-effacement. It means effacing our cowardly self, effacing our smaller self, and allowing our deeper self, the self that's aware of our connectedness with others, to come forth. And it was primarily in this question of service, which everyone feels called upon to do, that Gandhi said that Svadeshi was important. Don't give yourself a grand scheme of uh, saving the world from war. It's a little bit embarrassing because this is what I'm trying to do. But find the circle immediately around you that you can serve. And you can serve the larger collective through that circle. And that allows you to multiply your effectiveness. And it also enables you to overcome uh, the angles and corners in your own personality most efficiently. Now, uh, service is uh, not an idea that is highly regarded, except in that one military context, which I regard as a kind of misunderstanding. We all want to have technology and people serve us, and we don't want to be of service to others. And I think that when we adopt that ideology from the surrounding world, we're really violating one of our deepest needs. Uh, I, I know I've mentioned this before, but I think that until unless we find a way that we can serve others, we won't be fulfilled. What we need to bear in mind in terms of serving others is we're serving their underlying welfare. We're not serving their whims and caprices. Often, if you're a parent, you have to go against what your child wants in order to serve their deepest welfare, and we should not shun that responsibility. If we've been deeply immersed in nonviolence, 
we will probably understand something about the welfare of society that the majority of our fellow citizens don't understand. So when this is properly understood, and when you say to yourself, I may be making a mistake here, but I'm going to do what I think is most important for you and disregard my own welfare in the process. What I'm doing is I'm breaking apart the paradigm of separation that keeps us apart. Because that paradigm of separation says, my welfare is separate from yours. You may even have to suffer for me to be fulfilled. That is the biggest misunderstanding that's running around out there in our civilization today. When you turn your face against that and say, no, our well-being is completely interlocked, the most efficient way for me to serve my own well-being, to be happy, is to forget about it and serve your well-being. You're powerfully breaking through that illusion of separateness, that sense of alienation. And that's the most powerful nonviolent act that we can undertake. Thank <laughs> you.